So what we're going to do here is we're going to be hand executing code for arrays. So we're going to start with this piece of code and what we want to do is pass in an array. So in this case we're going to pass in that array there and then we're going to step through line by line and uh, do what the program should be doing, do what the computer should be doing. Yep. So remember that arrays start an index from zero. So I've got above here just the index of the data. And we're going to do it first with this data, which is this one here. And then we're going to do it with the, the second uh, row there of data. But we're just going to, for now, just step through that, through that first one together. And there is a sheet here, which you can click on, which will uh, uh, show you basically the same information. And you fill this out and you upload it. Uh, and that has a code in it as well. But I'm actually going to use the code from here because it has line numbers next to it. And what I'm going to do is show you how to do this two ways. And the first way, we're going to use these line numbers just to step through the program line by line. Later on, I'll show you a shorthand way, which you can use if you're more confident, but you should at least be able to do it this first way where you step through line by line. So I'm going to take a copy of that and we're going to go over to a spreadsheet here and Basically what we want is a column for each of the variables. Yeah. And also, uh, we actually want one for this test here as well. So whether i is, I'm going to move that across, because that's basically going to be the same the whole way through. And then we're going to have here, i less than data dot length. Okay. Let me just make that a bit bigger for everyone. So we have the first variable result, the second variable i. No, this is not Ruby code, um, but it's something like it. So then we have data i, which is going to be whichever element of the array we're up to. And then we've got this test, i is less than data.length. That's going to be either true or false. Yeah. And then we have data.length, which is going to be the number of elements in the array. So in this case, there's five elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to step through this program line by line yep. with this array coming in. So we're going to start with line four. And we're going to say result has been assigned the value zero. And then we're going to go to line five and we're going to say i has been assigned the value zero. Yep. Now data length is the length of the array. It's always going to be five. So we can kind of just put that in as many times as we need to. And then we come to line six, and it's going to be while i is less than data dot length. So i is zero, which is less than five. So that's going to be true. Yep. Then we come to line seven, and we say result is going to be equal to result plus data i. So first we need to work out what data i is i is zero, so data i is whatever's in the zeroth position here, so that is going to be six, yep. And result is of course zero, so it's going to be zero plus six, which is going to make it six. So by the time we finish line <coughs> seven, result is going to have the value of six, and then we come down to line eight, and we're going to say i equals i plus one, so it goes from zero to one. All right, we come back round to the top of the loop. So we come back round to line six. And we're gonna look, is i less than data.length? So i is one, data.length is five. So that's gonna be true. So we go through again. We come to line seven. And we're gonna go <coughs> result equals result plus data i. So we have to look up what data i is. i is one. So we come to the position with one here and we grab the minus three. All right, and then we're gonna calculate the result. So result is six, six plus minus three is gonna give us three. That's what we have by the time we finish line seven. We come down to line eight, and we have i equals i plus one, so it goes up to two. Yep. Then we come back up to the top of the loop, so we're back to line six. <coughs> And we go is i less than data.length. 
i is 2, 2 is less than 5, so that is true. We come down to line 7, and we get result equals result plus data i. So we have to look up data i. i is 2, so we come to the second position here. So that's going to be 3. So then we're going to get 3 plus 3, so it goes back up to 6. It's 3, result is 3, data i is 3, so that gives us 6. And then we come down to line 8, and then we get i equals i plus 1. So we come up to 3. All right, now we get to the end of the loop, and we come back up to line 6 again. And we're going to ask, is i less than data dot length? i is 3, data dot length is 5. So that is true. All right, so then we come down to line 7. Now we're going to go result equals result plus data i. So we need to know what data i is. i is 3. Yep. So we go to the third position and um, we grab the 8. So data i is going to be 8. And then we need to get result, which is 6. So 6 plus 8 is going to give us the 14 that we need there. Okay, so by the time we finish line 7, result has gone up to 14 and then we come down to line 8 and we go i equals i plus 1 so now i equals 4 and then we're at the end of the loop so we go back up to line 6 again okay is i less than data dot length yes 4 is less than 5 so that condition is still true we come to line 7. Result is going to be assigned the value of result plus data i. So we need to come to data i. i is 4, so we're going to get the 1. So data i, which is this one here, is going to be 1. And we're going to add that 1 to the 14, so that's going to give us 15. So that was 1 plus 14 gives us the 15. Yep. Then we come down to line 8 again. And we go uh, i equals i plus 1. So i goes up to 5. We need to just put a few more of these in. All right. We're at the end of the loop. We come back up to line 6. And we say, is i less than data dot length? The length of the data is 5. So this condition is now going to be false. Yep. And we jump then down to line 10 which is going to return the result, which will be the 15. So that's, that's the longhand way of doing it, where we step through line by line. And if you're not very sure of what you're doing, then I would recommend you do it that way. Uh, otherwise, what we can do is we can do it uh, like a, 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 a maybe a shorthand way, <clears throat> where we go through for each i. We're going to say i equals 0 data i equals 6, i is less than data dot length, true, and result is going to be at this point equal to 0 too. Yep. So we're not going to go through line by line, what we're going to do this time is go through loop by loop, all right? So uh, maybe what I'll do actually is I'll put the i, I'll switch these around, I'll make that i and I'll make that result, just so we can see that the uh, i is here. Okay, so first time we come through the loop, result is zero, i is zero, data is six, yep. So result is gonna be equal to result plus data, so uh, result is gonna be equal to six, yep. Next time we come through, i is one, so we're gonna to go to the next one. <clears throat> one is min data one is minus three, okay. So we're going to have result is equal to 6 plus minus 3, which is going to take it back to 3. This is still true at that point. Then we're going to come to index 2. Uh, 2 is less than data dot length, so that's still going to be true. <coughs> 2 is 3. So we're going to get uh, data i plus result, which is going to give us 6. Yep. Then we come down to i being 3. 
i is still less than data dot length so this is still true then we get uh, result is equal to data dot i so in this case we're going to get the third position which is going to be eight and we're going to go six plus eight which is going to give us the 14. then we come down uh, to i equals four four is still less than that than five so we go true so we're going to grab the fourth one which is one and we're going to add 1 to the 14 to give us the 15. Okay. And then we're going to take i to 5. And this is going to be false. So we're going to stop. So that's a shorthand way of doing it where you just go through the loop for each value of i. You can do it either way. <clears throat> the second way if you're more confident. Or the first way if you're not so sure about what's happening. Just make sure you understand what the program is doing. And how it's moving through this array. And when it's stopping. And what it's going to return. Once you've done that, you can think of a better name for this function that describes what it does. Okay, thank you.